when you are positioning yourself according to the peace and the purpose of God, and when you are present in the situation where he has placed you, God said all the other things that people run after, I'm going to bring it to you. If you want in on this word, shout, God's going to bring it to me. Come on, tell the person next to you, I don't have to chase it, stress about it, cheat to get it, violate my morality or my ethics. God's going to bring it to me. This is the covenant of grace. Watch this. I tried to get to God. I couldn't, so he ripped open heaven, stepped down to come inside of me so that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. No, I cannot achieve his holiness, but God's going to bring it to me. Heaven's going to come to my house. Heaven's going to come to my mind. Peace is going to come to my marriage. God's going to bring it to me. I want to shut the whole sermon down for a minute and give God praise by faith that he's going to bring it to me. What you need, he's got it. God's going to bring it to me. God's going to bring it to me. When I praise him, blessings come down. God's going to bring it to me. I don't have to beg him. God's going to bring it. Peter wasn't looking for a vision for his life. God brought it to him. All he did was go to Joppa. Can we talk about Joppa for a minute? Joppa. Everybody say Joppa. I thought about calling this message the Joppertunity of a lifetime, but that was corny. Yeah, I scratched that one out real quick. You can have it. That's not a good title for a message. But it got me that he was in Joppa, because I was like, hmm, Joppa. Joppa, 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 Joppa. Joppa, okay, a support city. I know that. They put the timber there. They would take the timber. And the timber came there when they built Solomon's temple. I think, I think they brought the tem timber from Lebanon to Joppa because it's on the Mediterranean coast. They brought timber there, and then they sent it to build the temple. Oh, maybe Joppa is something where God takes the raw materials. Joppa, no, that's not it. Joppa, 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 Joppa. Why does it say over and over again he was in Joppa? Go to uh, Acts 10, verse 1. It says it a couple times. because. Um, <clears throat> Remember, Peter got in trouble. He didn't have to go looking for trouble. Trouble came looking for him. Well, y'all were shouting a minute ago. <laughs> we, we, just, we just killed the vibe, I think. We killed the vibe. Peter wasn't looking for controversy, wasn't looking for conflict, wasn't looking for problems. He was in Joppa because there was a woman in the church at Joppa who was very important to the believers there, and he was in Lydda raising people from the dead, you know, just the stuff you do. And when he was in the middle of this crazy revival in Lydda, which wasn't too far from Joppa, this amazing E Kids volunteer died. Her name was Dorcas. Um, her Greek name was Dorcas. Her name was also Tabitha. And they asked Peter if he would come to comfort them. And he got there and he saw how important she was to all of them in Joppa. And he started uh, he started looking at all the, the clothes that she sewed for widows, and she had a ministry to the poor. She cared about people. She served on the parking team, she cared about people. She worked on production at uh, Raleigh Durham. She was They hated to lose Dorcas. And Peter got kind of bored. You know, he was a man of action, so he's like, This is cool, like taking a tour of everything she did. But y'all leave the room. Check out this scripture real quick. I know I said Acts 10, but I want to go back to Acts 9 real quick. I want to give you the whole story. Because we know what happened when he got to Joppa. How did he get there? It's important. 
He went to Joppa to visit Dorcas. Give me 940. Peter sent them all out of the room. She's been washed and placed for burial in the upper room, and as they're memorializing her, he got down on his knees and prayed. And turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. Peter's like, we can have a funeral or we could have a resurrection. Peter was, Peter was bold. He tried it like Jesus one time. Jesus did the same exact thing, but it was with a little girl. This little girl was, was dead, and Jesus sent everybody out of the room because he, he knew that if they stayed in the room, that their doubt might make it impossible for faith to really do what faith can do when it is unencumbered by doubt. What's the title of this message? Make room for the new. And when Jesus sent them all out, he said something in Aramaic, Talitha kum. It means little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. Now watch Peter imitating his master. He sent them all out of the room and turned toward the woman and said, Tabitha, get up. It's almost like Talitha. It's just one letter different. And he thought something if he did it, if Jesus did it, and if his spirit lives in me. I came with a message for somebody. Make room for resurrection. Make room for things in your life that you were just about ready to bury, to breathe again. Tabitha, get up. And she did. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. Well, I guess so. She sat up, and he stayed in Jaffa a little while. And they liked him. He was very popular in Joppa. Peter could have run for mayor of Joppa because he demonstrated great power in Joppa. 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 It's a place where it's a place where you don't expect anything great to happen, but something does. Joppa. Joppa is like your job. Jabba. Joppa. He was just doing his job, just going to see it, and a miracle happened. He was just going to see it, and a miracle happened. He was just going to see it and going to comfort them and going to do what he did, and a miracle happened. Joppa, Joppa, place where God put stuff together. Joppa, while he was in Joppa. Joppa, it's kind of familiar. Who, who else went to Joppa in the Bible? I was trying to remember. I was talking to the interns this week, and I put them on the spot. We had such a good time, didn't we? I said, who else went to Joppa? They went through every character in the Bible guessing. Zacchaeus, Bartimaeus, <laughs> Luke, Matthew, John. I was like, no, 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 no. It's somebody in the Bible. I'm going to give you a hint. It involves a fish. Rhymes with Corona. <laughs> Jonah went to Joppa. But watch what he did in Joppa. You ready? Jonah 1 3 says Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. God called him to Nineveh, but he resisted it. He resisted going to Nineveh because those were not the people he expected God to bless. He resisted what he did not understand. He resisted what he could not conceptualize. He resisted what he had no frame of reference for. He went down to Joppa and boarded a ship heading away from the Lord. So now I've got a contrast, and I want to ask, what will you do in Joppa? Will you be like Peter? Who, when he got to Joppa and God sent him an opportunity to say, Peter, I want you to make room for something new. I want you to believe that I can break a barrier in your life. I want you to believe that I'm about to do something that your mind has not conceived. Will you be like Peter who went with it, or are you going to be like Jonah who ran from it? Peter went 
to Joppa. While he was in Joppa praying, he saw something amazing that he didn't expect. And he looked and he saw a sheep from the four corners. Four corners representing the four corners of the earth. God's like, I'm about to break all of your barriers. I'm about to break through your unbelief. See, we talk about making room for the new. You want to go have a yard sale or something like that or put everything on. It's not about closet space. It's not about, it's not about clearing out your closet. It's about the transformation of your mind. Do you have room for the new in your mind? Because they didn't. Peter didn't. When God showed Peter what he was about to do, like this is the way it always is. When God shows us something, we compare it to our previous point of reference. And then we start consulting our resources, and, and God wants to bring us new relationships. But watch this. If you're not ready for new people in your life, you will bring the same patterns to the new relationships that you brought to the old relationships. And we literally keep people out of our lives that God wants to send because we are holding on to the hurts from the one who have already left. I feel the Spirit of God breaking barriers as I preach right now. Because you're like, what does this message have to do to me? I'm not getting on an airplane and going to preach to somebody in Caesarea like Peter did. You don't have to. All you have to do is dare to believe that God is making room for the new in your life right now. And even sometimes when it was painful for me and I thought I was losing things in my life, I wasn't losing it. God was moving it. Who is this for? I just need to know. Probably about 20 people. You didn't lose it. God moved it. He said you will still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out. Somebody shout, move it out, God. Anything that is in the way of me being who I need to be in this season, get it out of my heart, get it out of my mind, get it out of my habits. You can have it, God. I don't want it. I want what you've got. So you can't receive new miracles with old mindsets. Make room for the new. It looks like this. Emptying yourself, humbling yourself, and asking God, what do you want to do in my joppa? Or you can run from it and resist it. And you can keep remembering when the kids were so cute. They are 43 now. They stopped being cute quite a while ago. And the church was trying to figure out how do we protect what we loved while we embrace what is new. And I don't know, I think there are at least three lessons in this text. Y'all got a minute? Make room for the new. Number one, God says this don't limit yourself by labels. The first thing God told Peter. He said, you've got your nice little neat categories, because when the sheet came down, Peter saw all kinds of animals. And y'all need to know, in this culture, they respected visions. This was not like Peter's hallucination, or you know how some people now are so weird, and they're like, well, the Lord showed me a vision of us walking on the beach. It's like, bro, you need to ask her out and stop trying to embed it in this weird spirituality. <laughs> so, so Peter actually saw something, but remember… There's sometimes a tension between what you thought God showed you. It's a tension, and that tension is a real gift because that's where growth happens. Where it's like, God, I thought I thought I was going to be married to her the rest of my life, but I'm not. We're not married now. And that's painful. But what you do with it becomes your joppa which determines do you run from God's purpose for your future or do you run toward it? That's joppa. And the, and the word God gave me was, don't limit it with a label. 
Because the first thing he told Peter, uh, he said, Peter said in verse 6, Acts 11, I looked into it and saw four footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. And then after he saw the pigs in a blanket, he said, I try to keep y'all awake. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Now, when I read that, I said, God was trying to get Peter to go hunting? No. It wasn't about, it wasn't about the animals. He was about to send Cornelius, who Peter saw as an unclean Gentile. So he was using this. It wasn't about bacon. It was about barriers, mental barriers. So when he said, Get up, Peter, kill and eat, it wasn't that God wanted Peter to kill a pig. It was that he was trying to kill Peter's categories. In this season of your life, God is trying to kill your categories. He's going to use people you did not even like to grow you up and mature you. There was one person the other day that shared a Bible verse with one of my kids, and they left our church years ago. They didn't even like me when they left. But when they gave a Bible verse to my kids, I said, God, I don't care who hands them the scriptures. I'll take a cold cup of water in the pit of hell from anybody. I don't care who hands it to them. Use who you want to use, God. Do what you want to do. Kill my categories. As a matter of fact, when we say all things work together for the good, what we mean when we quote Romans 8.28 out of context, because Romans 8.28 is connected and conjoined incidentally to Romans 8.29, which says, according to his purpose. So what it means by good is it's going to fulfill his purpose, not my preference. Y'all can shout right now. What it means is, I can't categorize. That's God's job. It is God's job to know what's best for me. It is God's job to know what needs to happen. It is God's job to know what experiences I need to get. So God said, Stop limiting it by labels. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.